Hey, good morning. We are so grateful that everyone is here in person and for all of our friends and family who are, who are uh, joining us via our digital community. We are so grateful that you are spending this time with us to celebrate with our uh, children's ministries here to put on, um, again, just a really creative retelling of the good news and the reason that we can still celebrate um, even if it's a little different this year. So what I'd like for us to do, uh, whether you're at home or here in person, is let's open in a word of prayer. Gracious Father, we thank you that in every time and in every place, this good news of the arrival of your Son, our Lord, is to be proclaimed and celebrated. We pray that even as we uh, participate and celebrate with our uh, children's ministries in this uh, production, that you would remind us of this good news this day and always. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. I want to thank all of our children's ministry leaders and all of our students who put all the time in together to make this possible. Uh, and without further ado, let's quickly, whether you're at home or here, give a hand for our ensemble as we begin with the Nazareth News. Live, local, it's the Nazareth News with Reagan and Ellie. In-depth reporting from wherever news breaks. The Nazareth News starts now. Good evening, I'm Reagan Murr and welcome to the Nazareth Evening News. We begin tonight's broadcast with a programming note. Tonight's news production contains elements of truth and fiction. While the birth of Jesus really did happen over 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem, there were no field reporters on scene interviewing people, and we have taken some creative liberties with the timeline of events. In addition, we are not real news broadcasters, and this is not a real news studio. With that said, we invite you to enjoy tonight's production. Thank you, Reagan. I'm Ellie Frankincense. We continue tonight's broadcast with our top story. There was a major camel accident on the road to Bethlehem today. With traffic volumes high due to the census issued by Caesar and people returning to their hometowns to be counted, folks need to be alert and watch out for distracted riders. That's right, Ellie. It's been reported that distracted riding was the cause of an accident which had over 50 camels involved. Authorities say the number of injured is at 75 and that number is expected to rise. Authorities are advising that you avoid the main route to Bethlehem, and if possible, detour through the fields where the shepherds are biding and keeping watch over their flocks. We'll bring you more details as they become available. Thank you, Reagan. Distracted camel riding is becoming a real problem as younger riders check their satchels instead of always keeping their eyes on the road. In other news, the census is causing other headaches for travelers as overnight accommodations become more and more difficult to find. For more on the story, we go to Channel 25's reporter, Aubrey Greengrass. Aubrey, what can you tell us about this growing problem? Thanks, Ellie. I'm standing in the streets of Bethlehem, where I see families from all over the region desperately searching for inns that still have rooms available. As of an hour ago, there were one or two inns that still had a few empty rooms, but they were being snatched up quickly. By now, I'm sure most inns have reached their capacity and people are being turned away. In fact, I just saw one couple being directed to a stable out back. The wife is riding on a donkey, being led by her husband. And from the looks of things, she is quite pregnant and about to have a baby. Regan, I'll send things back to you now in the studio. Thank you, Aubrey. Well, if that's any indication of the troubles this census is causing, I'm sure Caesar will think twice about requiring another one. If you have any viewer photos or comments about the census, you can post them to Instagram and tag us or use the hashtag BCCensus. After the commercial break, we will give you an update on the story we brought you earlier this week about a Hebrew prophecy proclaiming the coming of a new king for the Jewish people. Please join us in singing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Dreamland. 
News with Reagan and Ellie. Welcome back, viewers. As I stated before the break, there's an update on the story we brought you last week regarding a Hebrew prophecy of a coming king. Ancient prophets have been writing about his coming for hundreds of years, yet we still have not witnessed his arrival. That's right, Ellie. Some local folks speculate and are hoping that the long-awaited Messiah will come with armies and power to overthrow Herod and free them from Roman oppression. There's even talk that he will come from the line of David right here in Bethlehem. Additionally, as more and more people arrive in Bethlehem for the census, we can't help but wonder, is the arrival of the long prophecy Messiah and Savior close at hand? We will continue to monitor this story and bring you more updates as they become available. Feel free to send us a tweet or Snapchat a photo if you have any viewer updates on the story of the so-called coming Messiah. I'm sure Herod is not too happy about this prophecy brouhaha and just wants it to go away. Furthermore, since prophets have been talking about for hundreds of years and nothing has happened, I'm not holding my breath for any breaking news. Um, Ellie, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we have breaking news. I'm getting a report from the fields outside of Bethlehem that a choir of angels simply appeared out of thin air and started singing. I'm being told in my ear that we have a reporter that just arrived on the scene. Let's go to Monica Heha to see if she can shed some light on the situation. Monica, what can you tell us about this celestial serenade? You heard that right, Regan. According to the shepherds who are out here abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night, the sky simply opened up and instantly filled with angels. Let's talk right to one of the shepherds who witnessed the event. I have Mia, the shepherd, here with me. Mia, what can you tell us? Oh man, it was just the craziest thing. I had just settled the sheep down for the night. They were kind of off, not really able to bed down like normal. They were skittish. It's like they knew something major was get about to happen. I kept looking for a lion or a wolf or something. You can never be too careful up here in the field. Usually try to sleep with one eye open. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, all, then all of a sudden there was a blinding light. We all looked up and instantly fell to the ground in fear. We had no idea what was happening. That's right. We thought we were in a dream or something. We were, we were just terrified and shaking, waiting for it to stop. Then, all of a sudden, one of the angels started talking to us. He said, do not be afraid. And I was like, well, too late for that. Then he said, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. We, we were like, what is he talking about? Is this some kind of joke? We thought someone was going to jump out from behind a sheep and tell us we were on candid camera. But nobody did. Just then it got quiet again, and we thought maybe it was over. But then suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared. But the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Totes cray cray, right? So you're telling me that a group of angels appeared out of nowhere, told you they had good news of great joy, and then announced that the Savior Christ the Lord has been born in a manger? Wow, you can't make this stuff up. No kidding. 
We didn't know what to think at first. Then we got talking, and then we decided maybe we should check it out and see if what the angel said was true. You know, as shepherds, we have FOMO when it comes to good news of great joy. FOMO? What does that even mean? Does no one use complete sentences anymore? Millennials. Um, duh. Hashtag fear of missing out. Yeah, it's not every day that a group of angels deliver such a life-altering news to a brood of lonely shepherds like us. So with all due respect, ma'am, we really want to go to Bethlehem now. Well, folks, you heard it here first. The ancient prophets may have been onto something with their baby theory. Tonight in Bethlehem, a baby has been born, a savior of the world, according to the angels. It appears this baby could undoubtedly change the course of history. Back to you in the studio, Ellie. Well, folks, on that note, we need to take a commercial break. This has been an unprecedented turn of events tonight. Our producers are trying to gather additional details, and we have more reporters hanging out to Bethlehem to see if, in fact, this supposed baby has been born. In the meantime, please join us as we sing Angels We Have Heard on High. Nazareth News with Reagan and Ellie. Welcome back, folks. During the commercial break, we received these photos from various eyewitnesses who saw the angel encounter. They tagged us on Instagram and used the hashtag W-D-I-J-S-A-G-O-A-P-G-N-O-G-J-F-A-P-A-S-A-A-B which stands for, whoa, dude, I just saw a group of angels proclaiming good news of great joy for all people and singing about a baby. Seems a bit excessive, but okay, we'll go with it. As you can see from the photos, the angels are, in fact, singing, smiling, and bringing good news of great joy. Even the sheep look like they're having fun. 
Whoa! Well, those photos and eyewitness accounts from the shepherds are pretty convincing. I'm starting to think that something amazing could happen tonight. And Monica, who knew she could take such good selfies? I'm getting a message from the producers that there is a strange light, a bright star of some sort, that is shining over Bethlehem. Do we have a crew that we can send to the scene? Do we know if the star is shining on some place or someone in particular? Ellie, I'm being told that Aubrey Greengrass, our Bethlehem reporter, is still on the scene in Bethlehem and is preparing to go live. She has some more details to share on the census, lodging, crisis, and this new star. Apparently, this star is connected to the long-awaited Messiah who, coincidentally, is who the angels sang about to the shepherds earlier tonight. Before we go live to Aubrey, please join us as we sing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. News with Reagan and Ellie. We're back. As we said before the break, there is an extraordinarily bright star that appeared over a stabler barn of some sort in Bethlehem. We're going live to Aubrey, our Bethlehem reporter. Aubrey, what can you tell us? Thank you, Ellie. As I said earlier, there are no rooms available in any ins and out. Everything is full. While I was making my way through the streets of Bethlehem in search of where the star is shining, I met these three kings. They tell me they have been on a journey searching for the baby that the star shined for. The star appears to be shining over the stable where earlier I saw a husband and a very pregnant wife being directed to, since all of the hands are full. Could that be the baby that the angels sang about and that these men are searching for? Let's hear it right from them. What can you tell us about your journey? We have been studying stars for years. We often heard about this special star, unusually bright star, that would lead us to the promised king. We were waiting for it, so when the star appeared, we knew that we had to follow it. That's right. We are experienced star watchers. We know immediately that the star would lead us to a long-awaiting messiah. 
We even brought these gifts to present to him. As we began our journey, we stopped to pay respects to King Harold and tell him of our trip to find the baby you written about the prophecy. He was very interested and almost eager to find the baby too. He said he wanted to meet the baby king so he could bow to him or bury him. I don't remember now. It was one of those two. So you're telling me that this star did not appear out of nowhere? It has a meaning, a purpose. It is leading you or us to the Messiah, the Savior King that has been prophesied about for centuries. Isn't that stable under the light of that bright star? Yes, we believe he is. We have traveled many, many miles to find the baby and to worship him. If the baby is long awaiting Messiah, then we need to worship him. We all do. He deserves our gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. He also deserves our worship and praise. Why don't you come with us and we can find the baby together? Oh, I'm not sure, but the writings would be huge. A king born in a barn. You can't make this stuff up. Why not? Let's go. Ellie, can you hear me in the studio? I'm going with the wise men to find the baby. The angels sang about him. The shepherds left the fields to find him. The wise men traveled with gifts to meet him. I think we need to bring our viewers to the baby as well. Well, all right then. Thank you, Aubrey. We look forward to your live report from the stable. While we wait for them to arrive, we're going to take a commercial break. Please sing with us, We Three Kings of Orientar. And, LA. and we're back. What a night we've had, folks. What star is a typical evening in Nazareth has turned to the opposite? The camel accident? The census debacle which caused an influx of travelers to Bethlehem? Then angels appearing out of nowhere to sing about a savior being born in a manger in Bethlehem. And finally, wise men traveling many miles, following a mysterious bright star, hoping it would lead them to an aforementioned baby. Let's go back to Aubrey Greengrass in Bethlehem to see if she has an update for us. Aubrey, what can you tell us? We're all waiting to know. Well, Ellie, this is unprecedented. Never in all of my years of journalism have I reported on a story that is as fascinating as this one. Let me set the scene. I'm here in the stable under the bright star with the shepherds we met in the fields, the wise men who we met before the commercial break, and a young mom and dad who have just brought a baby into the world. They are calm and sort of blown away by all the attention they are receiving tonight. The baby wasn't born in a warm, clean house. He isn't sleeping in a bed or wrapped in nice garments. 
He was born in a barn with animals, and he's sleeping in a manger where animals eat, and he's wrapped in tattered strips of cloth. Well, rather than listen to me go on and on, I want to get their side of the story. Excuse me, Mary. May I ask you a few questions? Of course. What would you like to know? Well, to begin, who is this baby? I've heard from a lot of people who they think he is. But as his mother, you would know best. How can this baby born in a dirty, cold stable be the long awaited Messiah of the world? It just doesn't make sense. Well, Aubrey, you're right about one thing. He does look like a regular baby, but he's not. He is God's son. He may be a tiny baby now, and he may have been born in a stable, but he will grow up and be a king. He will bear the weight of the world upon his shoulders and be the savior of the world. This is all God's plan. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Savior of the world? Seriously? You think so too? Does King Herod know that? Because that could be awkward. I'm just saying. Yes, I trust God that my son Jesus is God's son and the king of kings. It was in the six months that the angel Gabriel came to me while I was in Nazareth. He said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I was afraid, not quite sure what that meant. But the angel continued, he said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. The angel explained that the Holy Spirit would come upon me and the power of the Most High would overshadow me and that Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. So who am I to question a messenger? from the Most High God. We all know that nothing is impossible with God. So I responded, I'm the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Then just, just as quickly as he came, the angel was gone. Well, that's nice and all. A little unsettling, but interesting. I can't imagine that your husband, Joseph, took the news well. You have to admit that things did not look good for you. Joseph, Joseph, did you believe Mary when she told you the story of the angel encounter? And can I just say that angels have been making quite a few appearances lately. They've been busy. Wait, let me guess. An angel appeared to you too? Well, Aubrey, yes. An angel appeared to me too in a dream. The angel said to me, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So while well, at first it was hard to accept, I quickly realized that God had a bigger plan for our lives than we could ever imagine. His plans are better, and we are humbled that He chose us to be the parents of this amazing baby. Wow, this is a lot to take in. I'm not even sure what to make of it. I think our viewers need a brief minute to collect their thoughts. Reagan, I'm going to send it back to you in the studio for a commercial break. Just when you thought you've heard it all, this is the kind of night we journalists live for. It's one of those once-in-a-lifetime nights of groundbreaking reporting. So, on that note, we're going to take a commercial break. Please join in singing Silent Night, Holy Night.
It's the Nazareth News with Reagan and Ellie. Welcome back, folks. Are you as stunned as me? I'm still trying to gather my thoughts and process what we've heard tonight. Could it be true? Was the Savior of the world born tonight in a stable? Is this Jesus going to grow up to be King of Kings? I have to say that I'm starting to believe it. Aubrey, I'm going to send it back to you. What else can you tell us? Reagan, let me start by saying that I have been a skeptic when it comes to the prophecy of a Messiah, a Savior. All our lives, we've heard the same story, that one day we would be rescued by the Son of God. But the Son of God never came. Herod and the Roman Empire think that they ruled this world. And anyone who questions them is, well, you don't want to know. So when the reports of the angel's message and the mysterious bright star started coming in, I didn't make much of it. What's the point? God hadn't spoken through the prophets for hundreds of years. But now, sitting here with Mary, Joseph, and baby Jesus, I do believe that this baby, baby Jesus, is God's son and the savior of the world. Aubrey, you're right. This is an exciting and holy night. It's a night like no other. God's son was born right here in this stable in Bethlehem. He wasn't born in a palace. He wasn't born into earthly wealth. This little baby who was sleeping so peacefully and who was beginning in so humble and lowly will one day save the world. Praise God. Thank you for letting us share with your viewers the wonder of Jesus' birth. We're so glad that they got to witness the birth of God's Son. We hope that everyone who saw this broadcast will trust that Jesus is God's Son and that all who trust Him and love Him as God will be saved. Well, Ragan, Ellie, I'm afraid we're running out of time, so I'm going to send it back to you in the studio to wrap up. Thank you for that incredible report, Aubrey. The world as we know it has changed. The God of the universe, who loves us so much, has burst through space and time to dwell among us. He is here. God is with us. We hope you enjoyed going on this journey with us tonight. I imagine we have not seen the last of this baby. As his mother Mary said, Jesus will change the world. That's all from us tonight, folks. We invite you to tune in tomorrow as we investigate the effects of dehydration on our camel population. Could shrinking home truly be a danger to the rider? Until then, good night and Merry Christmas, Nazareth. Over the hills and hills
I am absolutely amazed over everything that I just saw today. This is incredible. There is nothing that has happened before you today that we've ever done before. Uh, we haven't done this on video. We haven't done this online. We haven't done this recording the parts separately. We haven't ever put all this together. We haven't used all this new technology. Oh my gosh, and what an incredible job of both of you and the families and everyone that contributed to all of this and the leaders. Oh my gosh, this, what a blessing. What an absolute blessing. And, and oh my Lord, <laughs> though this is a first for us, this is not the first time God has broken through our world and has delivered His Word to us in a way that works. Um, I am just absolutely thrilled with the message of Jesus Christ and Him coming into our world, into our midst. And no matter what's going on in the world, whether it's great strength or great weakness, whether in times of difficulty or joy, His Word prevails. His incredible story continues to be told in the loving families that come together to share it with all of us. Just fantastic. Uh, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord and Father and Jesus, thank you. We, we just lift your name up today, Lord, that you found a way for us to deliver this incredible message from the children. Uh, Lord, thank you so much for the great leaders, Lord, uh, that, that they would be strengthened, Lord, and continue on their path uh, teaching these incredible children. And Lord, we just pray and ask that you would continue to bless these families, that, Lord, you would keep our community safe, Lord, that you would give us a future and a hope, and always remind us of this incredible gift you gave to our world, and all the blessings that swirl around us all the time, uh, no matter what's happening in the world around us. We thank you so much for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and this incredible witness that we just saw. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.